Welcome back. This time last week, we were on the eve of a deadline for diplomats working toward a nuclear agreement with Iran. But once again, we have to report no deal. The proverbial can, has, proverbial can has been kicked down the road for another seven months, but the deadline extension brings the concern that Iran is continuing to develop its nuclear capability while the talks drone on. Now, there are also a number of other stories to discuss, including the dropping of charges against Egypt's former president. Steve Acanto is here with us once again, Chancellor of the Consular Corps College. Steve, let, let's start with these nuclear negotiations. You know, there was so much fanfare and hoopla, and a lot of positive thought behind this whole thing. Uh, but now it seems to be it's, it's, it's more of the same. Explain what's going on here. Well, I don't think you have uh, earnest parties on both sides, to be polite. The reaction to the talks breaking down in Iran was in very interesting eventuality. Mm -hmm. Actually, on the floor of their parliament, there were chants of down with America. They look upon this as a victory. They're taking America down by extending they meaning... this. The Iranians mm -hmm. are taking America down by extending this. The Americans, of course, the Obama administration would like to have, I, I believe, a, a legacy which included this settlement. Uh, and they're, I think they're pushing a little too hard. My view is that if the if this had been an earnest negotiation, it would have happened already. Well, I bet you there's one person who's looking at it saying, I told you so, and we know who that is, Benjamin Netanyahu over in Israel. That's right. And he has, uh, he, he's got the biggest stake, I think, at this point. Mm. Although uh, Iran right now is pretty well stretched. Their economy is being beaten pretty badly. They're in two surrogate wars right now. Uh, their oil is, uh, well, the oil mess you referred to it earlier in the show. Right. My opinion is that if they wanted to settle it, there was ample time to do it. Uh, like a real estate closing, if everybody wants to deal, it happens. In this case, the extension, kicking the can down the road, as we said in the, in the opening segment, uh, really, really expresses favor toward Iran. They have more time to do what they want to do. Well, okay, and speaking of that, you know, putting politics aside for a minute here, Steve, let's talk about this nuclear enrichment. What does that actually mean right now? Do you think perhaps that they are enriching more uranium here for nuclear weaponry? Let's put it this way. They could be, even if they're blueprinting it, even if they're setting up the arrangement to do it, they're certainly not sitting still. Mm. To them, this extension is an advantage. And, uh, you know, I think, I, I think it was Napoleon, one of them, who said, when your enemy's making mistakes, don't interrupt them. So the, <laughs> so the longer they go out, the more advantageous it is to Iran. All right, so the question now is, what can the West do? Well, the West can't do much. You can squeeze and squeeze the sanctions. Mm. You can do a public relations war, but that's not working whatsoever. I think... Uh, the West has to stop talking. This, the strategy I would take, I would, if I were John Kerry, and of course we all, everyone, everyone can be a Monday morning quarterback, that's unkind to John Kerry, but if I were he, mm. what I would do, I would tear a page from labor negotiations. There's a certain point where you stop talking, and you squeeze, and you squeeze, and you squeeze. The idea that by giving more, had by, by, by reaching out more, that somehow or other, they're going to come back, that there's going to be this uh, uh, agreement, I think, is mm -hmm. naive. And mm -hmm. I think at this point, forget the legacy, let's stop talking, and let's either get serious with sanctions, really serious, or forget the process. Well, I guess we've got an upper left hook, as I use a boxing term, to U.S. Uh, foreign policy at this point, and especially with uh, John Kerry. I'm going to move on to some other issues sure. here. Uh, and this kind of uh, the piqued my interest here. What Russian warships passing through the English Channel. What's this all about? <laughs> East side, west side, all around the world. Yeah. That's, that's Putin's. You know, I, I, was, I was much more taken with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the firings in Kamchatka. Kamchatka is that big peninsula in eastern Russia. It's the size of France, actually. Mm -hmm. And it's bounded by water on both sides, big peninsula. They're shooting nuclear test missiles off the coast there. Uh, this is near the Aleutian Islands of, of Alaska. Mm -hmm. That was big news. The fact, however, that the Russian warships hid away from a North Atlantic storm 
in uh, the English Channel was, you know, it's a worrisome kind of thing. In the back of our mind, we've all got the hunt for Red October, I suppose. But uh, it wasn't half as important, in my opinion, as this very aggressive firing of nuclear weapons in eastern Russia. Right. But this is Putin. Putin, the rubber band keeps stretching and stretching and stretching, and there's no one there to stop him. I want to come back to that in a minute here, but, you know, we've got to go to some drama over here in the Mideast. You know, the packed courtroom, you know, uh, sun-glassed, uh, you know, oh, Hazim yeah. Babark uh, without the sea and ski, and, of course, his defendants behind <laughs> the cage. Uh, and then, of course, all his supporters of the courtroom and just an outburst of joy uh, that he was exonerated of all charges and any murder in the 2011 uprisings. But on the streets, I think there was a different reaction. Action. Talk to us about well, that. Well, the reaction, the street reaction is the same reaction as the Arab Spring reaction, the revolution. The thing failed. So, uh, so al-Sisi, who is formerly the security minister for Mubarak, is now the head of the government. Ah, it, it's no surprise. Exactly. No surprise that he was given this verdict and that the sentiment, while there are people on the street rebelling, the country is having an intense wave of poverty. There's, there are no tourists. Hmm. Tourism was a big deal. Sheikh al-Sharmain, all of the tourists, they said in a, one, one report that I read in England that the, the horses that pull some of the carriages are dying of starvation. Hmm. So no matter how much they protest in the street, the uh, revolution appears to have failed. And this is just a leaning back, I think, by uh, al-Sisi to a safer place and by his government. I, it was no surprise at all. Right. Okay, I'll tell you what, we're going to stop there. Of course, we'll talk about Putin. That won't be going away the next time we get together. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Julian. You got it. All right.